Here's an item I've heard a lot about. The Instant Pot. Well, that certainly saves some time disassembling it. This one was basically brand new, so, uh, it's very nice and clean. Definitely a good bit of aluminum in there. Ooh, shiny. And yes, indeed, that is stainless steel. This one here is mostly aluminum, but we are getting a bit of a stick from the magnet. And the lid here, I believe to be stainless steel. Let's start with this because it's smaller. Obviously we start with some screws and it still doesn't want to pop out. Well, we'll look to the other side then. This thing's got some weight. Plastic garbage. Probably gonna get a lot of plastic garbage. Now that's a bit of aluminum. And bam. Almost clean. Save for this little bit. Just give those a few love wraps and they should come right out. Controlled destruction. I love it. We use this to hold all the little metal bits for now. And uh, let's see how this comes apart. Ah, security screw. Well, how secure can it really be? Now, pretty much the only thing holding this on is, uh, well, it's already got it. Now, is it stainless? Yeah, kind of. It's that same appliance stainless steel. Technically, yes, but not high enough to just going in steel. Which leaves us with the business end. And naturally, a million screws. wire clipping and we're pretty much cleaned up. This heating element, that's gonna be... I will get to that. Right now we've got more plastic garbage. And more screws. And more wires. This little piece was kind of a waste of time. I should have just thrown it in the steel in the first place. And nobody wants to watch me clip a whole bunch of wires. So there's the rest of the little steel bits, and there is all of our wire. So this, I thought, would be cast aluminum. It does make a beautiful sound. But surprisingly, it was completely magnetic. Which is actually a bit easier. So that leaves us with these four components. We'll start with this. Now this doesn't seem to have a whole lot of copper on it. Uh, it's pretty much just these steel pieces, a bunch of ceramic, and then a few of these silver buttons. Now moving on to the circuit board, not terribly interesting. Angle grinder tells us pretty easily that these are brass. And uh, we'll, we'll just take them off the easy way. And then there are just a few precious components 
that have a bit of copper in them. And the rest of that, well, there's one more. So these little things, I forget what they're called. There is a copper plate inside of them, which will crack the uh, plastic off and reveal. And there's that. The rest of these are itty bitty. They are fun to take apart, uh, but the total amount of copper is... The point of this series isn't to tell people whether it's worth it or not, just to inform, but you'll see at the end. Uh, here's the little magnet for a size comparison. And then the main control board, which... Surprisingly simple. Actually, this entire appliance is surprisingly simple. I'm kind of impressed. And this here little angle grinder action will get us these steel handles, leaving it clean. Room. Lovely. So this is cast aluminum that has been uh, poured around the heating element while the aluminum is liquid. Normally, I would just throw these into the dirty aluminum bin, um, but for the sake of the video, we're going to put a little extra effort in. That was the aluminum plate flying up and hitting me in the shin. Turns out cast iron is more brittle than uh, cast aluminum. I liked having this iron plate, but hey, we both learned something. And the hammering continued. I, again, not trying to tell anyone how to scrap, but I would not recommend doing this. I will not be doing it again if I can help it. Now the heating element, although it looks copper, is actually just uh, like a dirty type of stainless steel. I don't know what it is, but it's magnetic. I do know on the inside there's something that is valuable. This wire. Now this wire is actually made of a nickel chromium alloy, or nichrome. It's basically the resistor in the circuit, and it's the part that heats up. Unfortunately, it's not really worth trying to collect as scrap because the volume simply does not add up. Now this little uh, cooking container, we're going to have to chop up into more manageable pieces. Et voila. And the rest of this is just going to go in this field. Now, moving forward, I've seen some interest online uh, wondering whether you can use a pottery kiln to melt aluminum or copper. And I happen to have one right here. Uh, this one is old, it doesn't have any features, but my grandfather used this very same one to melt aluminum for years. I personally haven't tried it, so we're going to do that now. Okay, the truth is I have tested it, and I can tell you it has some specific disadvantages over using a melting furnace. And the first one is it takes a very long time to get to temperature. So while we leave this to cook, let's uh, turn our attention back to the copper. Not a whole lot. But we're going to go for it anyway, because I think this makes a pretty good example of what you really get from some circuit board components.
There. That's the whole pour. Now, 45 minutes later, let's have a look in here. I'm pulling this away slowly because I don't want to introduce oxygen too quickly. That's a problem that I had before. Uh, what I am going to introduce is a bunch of borax for flux because aluminum loves to oxidize. It's, it's so good at it. That was my problem with my previous experiment with this thing. Uh, all of my aluminum erupted in a cloud of fluffy aluminum oxide and it kind of ruined the melt. That's the real issue with these things is you don't have a lot of control. You can't even see in it. And here we are another 40 minutes later and it does seem to be melted. So another issue is I can't really use this thing to heat up the mold very well, uh, but that's fine because using the torch lets me introduce a layer of soot, which should make for a cleaner pour. The biggest problem though is the time wasted. Uh, so far we're at an hour and 20 minutes for this small amount of aluminum to get melted. I mean, that's not crazy, but it's not very efficient. Pull a little slag and uh, Well, you know what? In spite of the downsides, that was a beautiful pour. And a surprising amount of slag settled at the bottom. I'm guessing this, it doesn't feel very heavy, so I, I'm saying this is the non-stick coating from the pot that we chopped and melted down. I'm just surprised it decided to hang out at the bottom. Yeah, not a lot of mass there. But I'm glad it separated easily. Just look at that. Yeah, despite the downsides, I gotta say, I am impressed. But it did take an hour and 20 minutes. So for the second half of this project, I'm gonna fill up our crucible with all of the, uh, the broken pieces of cast and go back to the old reliable, the proper kiln. certainly more fun to look at, not to mention fuel efficient. And now I'll just use the flame coming off of it to uh, soot up the, the ingot mold. Quite a bit of slag to skim off the top of this one. And I think I'm gonna need new gloves because, yeah, melted the finger pretty good. I also need to get my hands on a bigger ingot mold, but that's neither here nor there. Poured pretty good and melted in less than 15 minutes. So, can't be mad about that. I was surprised, though, to look at uh, how nicely this one came out, despite being a, a uh, less castable... I mean, look at this. If, if somebody handed me these and asked me which was melted from cast aluminum and which was uh, cold-formed aluminum, I would be wrong. The finish on this uh, cast aluminum is just ugly really didn't turn out very nice at all compared to the other one. But I'm not complaining. They're all pretty good bars. Uh, for a total of just over a pound and a half of aluminum. Uh, which is far more than the copper at 0 0.01 pounds. Uh, and the brass is about the same Exactly the same, huh? And then the insulated wire, 0.2 pounds. I think the real value here is going to come from the steel, actually. The stainless, for one, uh, being just over 4 pounds. Yeah, 
and then the regular steel, uh, which is about, well, almost twice as much. So that grand total is what you get from scrapping an instant pot. But in all fairness, I just wanted to know what was inside these things. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Like, subscribe, leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.